Hey guys, a few days ago I released a commentary on a short video called Signs of the Last Day where we find an Islam apologist or Islamologist by the name of Hamza Yusuf making astonishing claims. Now, because it was high level, I skipped over some of the items and in case somebody is wondering about one of the stranger claims, yes, I also noticed it and decided to do a fact check. Now, Yusuf claims the Prophet predicted same-sex marriage. I mean, that's a sound hadith. He said the end of time will not come until a man marries a man and a woman marries a woman. And we have no evidence in human history that that was ever, we have no evidence that any culture has ever sanctioned same-sex marriage. But he said it will be one of the signs of the Okay, so after checking, we found out that the hadith he calls sound is actually fabricated, a fake. But then he says there is no evidence that any culture, any culture ever, sanctioned same-sex marriages. Now, he had to catch himself to get the wording right, but that's what he said in the end. Now, I find that strange for multiple reasons. If you go to the Encyclopedia of Islam and the Muslim world, you will find there a passage that says about LGBT history that even Muslim poets, often Sufis, in medieval Arab lands and in Persia, wrote odes to the beautiful wine boys who served them in the taverns. In many areas, the practice survived into modern times, as documented by Richard Francis Burton and Audrey Guide and others. So homoerotic themes were present in poetry and other literature written by some Muslims from the medieval period onwards, which celebrated love between men. In fact, these were more common than expressions of attraction to women. Looking at the timeline of LGBT records, we can go back 11, 12, whatever, thousand years, and we find same-sex relationships. We can go all the way through history and find them mentioned in every culture and every civilization. And even if people didn't understand the biological functionality the way we do today, the fact is that these relationships existed. I can run forward all the way to the 8th century CE and find Islam there just like any other group. Now, some Islam apologists or Islamologists might argue that not all of these were literally what Yusuf claimed, same-sex marriages. Yep, I agree. And that's why you need to switch over to the history of same-sex unions on Wikipedia, for example and then go straight to the references. Now, here in the references, you find sources for hundreds of examples of same-sex relationships, which we call marriage today, like the public linking of two or more people with or the, without a feast to celebrate the union. If you go and then read the text, the text itself, you will find dozens of examples of such unions on all continents and in all cultures and civilizations. Something Hamza Yusuf claimed didn't exist. Now, this particular example only covers Europe, the Middle East, and China. All it took was a few minutes, and even a general encyclopedia like Wikipedia brings out so many examples. I, even I, me, myself, I was thoroughly surprised that it was so common and yet so swept under the rug and not publicly acknowledged. Like, I did not learn any of this in school even though I did go to some very different ones. Now, in conclusion, I think we can safely ignore Yusuf's claim and acknowledge that same-sex relationships are not just a phenomenon of modern times, but has existed throughout history. I'm well aware this is not comfortable for everyone, but I'm sorry, it's a fact. Now, why the people who wrote Torah, Bible, Quran, why they wanted to prohibit same-sex relationships and, and, and make it a sin, the male-male part in particular, this is now down to speculation or guessing, with very few facts available as to the question of why. I'll leave that to others. So thanks for your time, and see you in another video. Ciao for now.